Are you sad over the death of the internet? What was all once fun, lovingly crafted personal web pages have slowly been consumed by boring and basic social media with nothing but corporate ad filled websites. Well, this is 2025, baby. Everybody has a web page. And if you don't, don't worry, because I'll teach you how to make one. Sexies, it's money from Talk Showbot, and you're watching no good fucking television. Welcome to I Teach You HTML in less than 20 minutes, where you guessed it, I teach you HTML in less than 20 minutes, CSS included. Now, if you're a veteran here and not someone who found NeoCities months ago and wants to finally make slash upgrade their site, this is going to be a different type of video than what you're used to. But fret not, kittens, daddy's just venturing out. All right, and before we start this shit, I just want to say. I am not a professional, okay? I am just a guy who's been coding for about five years. I've had four different websites and I'm frustrated because when I was learning, there were like two fun HTML tutorials and the rest just felt like guys making commercial sites who think Comic Sans is the actual devil. My word is not gospel. I'm aware some of the things that I do are a little bit unorthodox, but that comes with the territory when you're self-taught. So yeah, take what you want from this tutorial if you're better than me or just think something I do is weird and you don't wanna do it my way. You are more than free to change up my flow. This is just just what works for me. Another thing is this is an absolute beginner HTML tutorial. So if you're more seasoned, it's gonna seem like I'm over explaining some stuff or going into details that are like common knowledge if you know your way around web design. You know what I'm talking about already? It's good for you, here's a cookie. This one is for the true newbies out there just to make the whole process seem a little less daunting because once you actually know what you're doing, coding is easy as shit if not just a bit frustrating. Anyways, let's jump right in. I will hold your hand, but I am not gonna baby you. So keep up, okay? Okay, so first what you need is a website host, obviously. Um, and guess guess which one we're gonna be using today. Don't look at the don't look at the thumbnail or the title. Just just guess. Take a wild guess. Anyways, my host of choice obviously is NeoCities because it's what I was first introduced to, but I hear NecoWeb is also good. I don't know, I don't use it, so I won't knock it because I haven't tried it. So when you sign up, whatever your username is, it's gonna be your site name, but what they don't tell you is whenever you change your username, it freezes the thumbnail of what your site looks like to whatever it was when you changed it. So no matter how many times you update your index, whatever it is when you change your username, that will always be your thumbnail. So once you've got your account all set up, you're gonna see this. This is your dashboard, and this is where all your files and folders are held. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory, you can upload stuff here, but be warned, the free version of NeoCities doesn't let you upload stuff other than images and GIFs, I believe. Be wary of that. And then now, you want to go to the little paper that says index, and you click edit. If you just click on index, then it's going to take you to what your index looks like off rip, which is this. And it's boring, but don't worry, I'll teach you how to spice it up. Come on, walk with me, talk with me. Your index is your homepage. You cannot delete this file because it is literally the base of your website on NeoCities. However you edit this will be the first thing that people see whenever they come onto your site. And that's a little bit intimidating, so I usually just make a separate file to code everything on that only I can see until I'm ready, and then I just copy and paste my code into the index file, but like I said, that's just me. When making a new file, you can name it pretty much anything you want, just as long as it ends in .html and you can code with it. And that's all you really need to get started. When you open the editing page, you'll be met with this, although yours probably won't look exactly like mine because I've got a specific theme on because I'm just cool like that. Uh, but this is what all you'll be working with, basically. Um, it's not a bad start. It's got all of the bases. It's the base code. But let's get you acquainted with some of these tags. These bad boys are the HTML tags. And that's basically what the computer will be reading to know what exactly your website holds. You'll notice the one at the bottom has a forward slash, and that is because it's a closing tag. It's basically a way to say that you're done using that tag. And it's super important to remember or your computer might have a hard time understanding what it's supposed to be doing. Next up is the head tag, and this is where it's gonna be super obvious that I'm still taught because I don't I don't bother with this. I only use it to change the title and website icon. I'm I'm sure that there's other uses for it, but you don't need to fiddle with it much. I'm not even exactly sure what it does. And then it has this neat little thing right here for your CSS. Uh, a CSS is a cascading style sheet, which basically means that it's what gives your website all the pizzazz. Like here's a page with base HTML, and here's it with CSS. Some people like to have their CSS in a separate file, but I find that that's way too complicated for me to constantly switch pages when I want to change stuff. So I keep it all together by using what's known as the style tag. Now, this is where we deviate from what our base is because in the base code given, the next tag to come is the body tag. But this is usually where I'd put my style tags and have my CSS. Again, this part is optional if you prefer to do it on a separate file, but we're not at that though. So patience, just pa patience, come on. And then next up is the body tag. This is where all of your actual code that will be displayed is. In the base code provided, you've got all the basic HTML tags that you need to be acquainted with. We've got the paragraph tag, which is how you break up blocks of text. But a small hint, if you want a smaller break of text instead of like this large space, you can just use the break tag. 
link tag, it links to other pages or sites, list tag if you are into making lists, and your image tag for making pictures. Sometimes, if you've uploaded images, you can just type in whatever the image name is, .jpeg or .png, but sometimes, NeoCities hates you, so you'll have to go to your dashboard, manually click on it, and open the image, and copy the link, and put it in there. Is it tedious? Yes. Do I know why it makes you do this? No. I'd say this was just a me problem if it wasn't a problem that's been consistent with every single one of my sites. You've got your formatting tags like h1 for header 1, h2 for header 2, h3 for header 3. The higher the numbers get, the smaller the font size, and then you've got bold italic uh this one's not included within the base code but here is the highlight tag you're welcome i don't know why it's that but it is uh the center tag is also really good to know since i know some people are really into the whole centered look and then at the bottom they've got a neat link to neo cities tutorials i personally never use these because i find listening to someone break it down is way easier than just reading it out and you're probably here for that exact reason uh, yeah so um that's that's basically all that they tell you and then here's what they don't tell you because they hate you Div tags. These things are your lifeblood. If you want to have an actual good time when it comes to the whole making it pretty part, it, it, this this is for you. And also, it'll just make shit easier if you don't want to constantly scroll while looking for specific parts of the web page that you're working on. So here's how to do it. It's really simple. So imagine a burger, and I'm so fucking serious. So the open and closing div tag will be just like your burger buns, and you could set it up just like you would a style tag or the body tag, and then you're gonna go div equal sign and then put whatever you want and that'll be the title you put whatever content you like in the middle and that's all the fixings and then you close it out with the bottom bun with a forward slash div tag there you go you can name your divs whatever you want i usually name them whatever they serve as like header navigation bar etc etc and then whenever you have to look for that specific div later on you can just control f that bad boy and then bam you're right there so yeah that's all the basics that you need for html i think i rarely go outside of those few things so yeah that's pretty much it <laughs> Okay, so now that you know everything, we're gonna pause and rewind. So whenever I'm coding, I like to do a quick little mock-up of whatever page I'm working on right before I start actually coding. So I know exactly what I want it to look like and where everything is gonna go for like a fun before and after. Like check it before, after. So what I usually like to start with when it comes to CSS is the body. It's super easy and efficient. You type in body, you do the little squiggly line bracket, and then you can change stuff. This is where you can change stuff like the background of your webpage, what font you want to use, and the default color of all of the text. The only rule is that you always end whatever you change with a semicolon. So you want to change the background, easy. Background, colon, whatever color you want, semicolon. You want to change the background to an image, background dash image, colon, whatever you want, dot JPEG, PNG, semicolon. And now that's your background. You change the default color, color, colon, whatever you want, semicolon. Now all your text is that color. A good note is if you want a specific color, it's always good to have a handy hex code website open. There's an automatic one in Google though. If you just look up hex color, it's nothing too fancy. You're gonna change the font family, font dash family, colon, whatever you want, you know, and then semicolon. You're really stressing that home because sometimes I'll forget it and I'll be like, man, my CSS sure is broken. It's not broken. You just forgot to use a semicolon. These are all of the fonts that HTML can automatically recognize. And you can change default font size here as well. Uh, whatever you change, when styling your body will automatically be applied to your entire web page basically everything in the body tag will be whatever you change across the entire page so you change the font color to red all of your text will be red and now after you close out of the body section of your style tag this is where those divs come in handy so basically you will type hashtag and then whatever you named your divs when you were making them and you do the little squiggly line what the fuck is that called hang on braces that's fucking stupid. Anyways, you take the squiggly bracket and then you can change whatever you want about the div. You can style everything the same way that you did for the body, but instead of being for the entire page this time, it'll be for that div and that div alone. Another thing we can play around with is sizing. You can change the width and height by going, get this, width, colon, whatever you want the width to be, semicolon, and height, colon, whatever you want the height to be semicolon wow it's so easy it's so oh my god that's so easy when messing with this i usually like to stick for pixels for my measurement there's other ways you can look into but you know pixels is what i like it's universal it's easy to understand all you gotta do is just type a number and then slap a px on the end of that bad boy you want your div to have an outline handy dandy border tool here to save the day this one's got multiple attributes so you can change the style color and the size all at once for instance you want a dash blue border that's on the thicker side easy border colon blue dashed 10 pixels and then you don't forget the semicolon obviously you're not a fan of the boxy look well that's fine you can use the neat little border radius 
it'll round up the corners of whatever div you're working with. The higher the number, the rounder it'll be. Now a fun little hack, if you wanna have multiple divs have the same style, instead of copying and pasting all of your CSS code, instead of using div ID when identifying a div tag, you can use div class. And then instead of using the hashtag, you just use a period. You want a bit more spacing between the edges of your div and the content within said div? Padding, buddy, self-explanatory. Padding, colon, however much you want, slap a PX at the end and then a semicolon and bam, there you go. You should always keep padding in mind whenever you're using border radius. Now here's where it gets a little more complicated, positioning. Now for me, since I am self-taught and have no standard of professionalism, this is where I just use margins because that's what's easiest for me and doesn't make me want to die. Easy enough to understand. You want a div to move to the left, margin dash left, colon, however much you want it to be spaced from the left but you should actually be smart and learn the different positioning methods. So here they are, explained to you, explained to me by W3 schools. Because to be honest, I, I don't get any of them besides like the fixed position. A div with static position is positioned within a way that is normal with everything else. Basically like you're not doing anything. A relative position will be positioned, get this, relatively from where it normally would be. Wherever I've used this tag, I've had my site not look great on other monitors. Um, So I say use this bad boy with caution. The fixed position will have whatever div it's applied to just stay wherever it is no matter how much you scroll and then the absolute position is also the only other one that i actually use it's good for overlapping stuff and that is literally all that i use it for and honestly that is quite literally all that you need to know when it comes to css <laughs> And time. That's gotta be some sort of world record, right? The NeoCities coding community is vast and filled with all kinds of wonderful knowledge and resources. So here are some of my favorites that I will be sure to link in the description. W3 Schools, AKA the holy grail for all your coding needs. I swear, if you're ever having an issue at all, all you have to do is search whatever you're having trouble with. And then W3 Schools, trust and believe they have your back. The second most useful tool is catbox.moe because listen, okay, so the basic version of NeoCities comes with a limited storage space, okay? And if you're an artist or just to have a generally image heavy site, that shit's gonna start going fast. Why worry about all that trouble when you've got an easy fix here? You just copy the link they give you and then bam, image right there, not taking up space. And it lets you get past file type blocks since NeoCities has those. Remember, remember what I told you? Third most used tool in my arsenal, remove.bg. It makes life so much easier than manually removing the backgrounds from images I want myself. Again, super helpful if you got image heavy layouts. Scripted resources is also very mega helpful. It's got loads of code for you to copy and paste. Cool effects, music players, chat boxes, you name it. It's probably here. I like to call it the fun version of W3 schools, but instead of breaking everything down to you, they just let you copy and paste. So much easier. Also, I quite literally cannot make a NeoCities video without mentioning the sad girl layout builder. That'd be literally criminal. So it's a pretty basic layout builder that also explains to you in the code itself. It's very neat, but it's got a limited customization with the actual layout builder part. I don't recommend just using it plain, but breaking it down and tailoring it to your needs. But you know, then again, that's just me. And here's some fun ideas if you've got a site and you don't know what to put there. Shrines and fade pages. These are always my favorite parts of sites. It's so fun hearing people talk about the things that they're passionate about. Join a web ring. You wanna be part of a group that has the same interests as you? Web ring, baby. There's some all over NeoCities and you can find them on anyone's webpage or just look up web ring tag on NeoCities. Do you wanna say that's specifically for hosting web comics that's compatible with desktop and mobile? Yeah, I see you. You wanna be the next fucking RAN friend. You're not slick. Anyways, uh, Rarebit. Rarebit layout, right there. It's so easy. Get a guest book. Those bad boys are super neat and let people tell you sweet things when visiting your site. I love my guestbook and everyone who leaves messages in them. Or you could get a C box, which is like a live update chat box widget. I don't like this one. I don't like, I, j I don't like it. It doesn't have great moderation services. So uh, recommending that one with like the fattest grain of salt. And there you have it, sexies. So remember, with a little patience and an insane amount of time on your hands, your website can look like mine. Ka chow! Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it helpful and comment anything else that you would like to know because I think coding should be more accessible. Another thing, shout out to my boy Bilvi for constantly bothering me about this video. This one is for you. Mwah. I love you. Um, and that is really all. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that other YouTube promotional shit, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, stay to your girl. See you in cat heaven.